Previously, we learned how to handle events in React components. But let me show you a problem you will run into when building real applications. Say you're building a button component and you want to use this same button all over your application. In your navbar for sign up, in your contact form for send message, or in your shopping cart for checkout. Same button component, but each one needs to do something completely different when clicked. Now here's the thing, the button component itself shouldn't know about signups, contact forms, or shopping cards. That would make it impossible to reuse. Instead, we want the parent component to control what happens when the button is clicked. In the navbar, the navbar component should control its button's behavior. In the contact form, the contact component should decide what happens when its button is clicked. In a shopping cart, the shopping cart component should decide what happens when its button is clicked. Makes sense, right? So here's the pattern. The child component needs to communicate to its parent, hey, I was clicked. Then the parent can execute whatever logic it needs. Now you already know that for parent to child communication, we use props. But here's what might surprise you. For child to parent communication, we also use props. But this time, we pass event handlers as props. Let me show you exactly how this works. Back in VS Code, within the source folder, I'll create a simple button component and two different parent components that use it. So create a new file called action button.jsx and define and export a new component called action button. So export const action button is equal to an arrow function. The component should accept a text prop and return a button with the text. So button element within curly braces, text. Now let's create two parent components that use this button. Create a new file called contact.jsx and define and export a new component called contact. Export const contact is equal to an arrow function. For the JSX, return a div tag with an h2, contact us. Below the heading, we will include the action button component with the text prop equal to send message. Make sure to import the component at the top. Import action button from dot slash action button. Similarly, create a new file called newsletter.jsx and define and export a new component called newsletter. Export const newsletter is equal to an arrow function. For the JSX, return a div element with an h2 that says subscribe to newsletter and then the action button component with the text prop subscribe. Make sure to import the component at the top. Now let's import these components in app.jsx and render them. So import contact component from dot slash contact and import newsletter component from dot slash newsletter. In the JSX, I'll add them to the top. Invoke contact and invoke newsletter. Save the files and check the browser. We see the contact and newsletter components rendered. The h2 contact us and the button send message, the h2 subscribe to newsletter, and the button subscribe. Right now, clicking these buttons does nothing. Let's fix that by passing event handlers as props. First, let's modify the action button component to accept an onclick prop, so onclick, and pass it directly as the onclick event handler of the button. Button, onclick, we assign the onClick prop. Now, each parent can control what happens when the button is clicked. Let's modify the contact component to handle the send message event. Create a new function called handle send message. This is going to be an arrow function and we can alert sending your message. Now, we can pass this function as the onClick prop to the action button component. So action button on click is equal to handle send message. Similarly, let's modify the newsletter component to handle the subscribe event. 
So create a new function called handle subscribe. This is going to be an arrow function where we alert, thank you for subscribing. Now we can pass this function as the onClick prop to the action button component. OnClick is equal to handle subscribe. Let's go back to the browser and test this. Click send message and we see sending your message. Click subscribe and we see thank you for subscribing. The same button component but completely different behaviors. The parent contact component handles sending messages and the parent newsletter component handles subscriptions. The button component doesn't need to know about any of it. This is the power of this pattern. The button stays simple and reusable while each parent component controls its own logic. Let me show you another example with data passing. Say we're building a menu for a restaurant app. Let's create a new file called menuitem.jsx. Here, define and export a new component called menu item. Export const menu item is equal to an arrow function, and the component should accept a name, price, and on order prop, which we will destructure and return a div with the name, the price, and a button with the text order. On click of the button, we call the on order prop, which will be a function, and pass the item's data up to the parent. So on order, and we pass in name, comma, price. But when we do this, the function gets immediately invoked. What you want is to return the function so React can invoke it. So this is going to be an arrow function that returns on order with name and price. Now the parent can use these values. Let's create that parent component. A new file, menu.jsx, and define and export a new component called menu. The component should return a div with a heading that says our menu, followed by menu items. We've already defined our menu item component, so let's import it at the top. Import menu item from dot slash menu item, and in the JSX, invoke the component with the appropriate props. For name, we'll pass pizza. Price is equal to $12. And we have the on order prop, which we will define in a minute. I'm going to duplicate this, change name to burger. Price is going to be eight. And the final one, salad, price is going to be six. For the on order prop, we're going to assign a new function called handle order. Within the component, let's define this function. Const handle order. This is going to be equal to an arrow function. And the function receives the item name and the item price as parameters, which we're going to use as part of the alert message. You ordered dollar curly braces, item name for dollar curly braces, item price. So each menu item knows its own data, name and price, which it will display and passes it up to the parent when clicked. The parent menu component receives that data and can do whatever it needs to. Add to cart, update total, save to database, whatever is the requirement. In our case, we simply alert the values. Let's import this menu component in app.jsx and render it. Import menu from dot slash menu and invoke the menu component. Check the browser and we see the menu component rendered at the top. Click the order button and we see you ordered pizza for 12. Click order for burger. You ordered burger for eight. And salad, salad for six. We are able to pass data from the child component to the parent component through the event handler. Very important pattern to keep in mind. All right, to recap what we've learned, when you need a child component to communicate with its parent, you pass event handlers as props. The child says something happened and the parent decides what to do about it. This pattern is absolutely fundamental in React. 
You will use it every time you build a reusable component that needs different behaviors in different places. And that wraps up event handling in React. For our next topic, we will finally dive into the concept of state in React. I've taught thousands of developers and state is always the turning point. It's where React goes from, okay, I get it, to, oh wow, now I get it. So take a deep breath and let's get started.